welcome back guys um we were actually we we're actually doing a uh a last of us uh podcast um before you had joined uh mr flick but um welcome uh everyone we um we have larry flick on here today um i'll do i'll say this introduction just because it's on your vero and i i, I like the way it's you know written out and done um so larry flick for those who don't know is a og serious xm host um a music journalist and a queer activist um so larry first and foremost welcome to the chilling with villains podcast Welcome, man. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I like what you guys do. Uh, I've been following it since I found you um, about a year ago, maybe oh, a little yeah. bit less. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's great. It's great stuff. Mm. Very good stuff. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to, I actually wanted to hit you up a lot sooner um because it's funny you know i saw that you know you you were um with sirius xm obviously for for quite some time and i I only recently found out about sirius xm like maybe two three years ago because uh when my girlfriend got a new car um it came with like it for like they're like hey for three months you get it for for free yeah And and then i got really attached to uh to Pitbull's Globalization Station. Oh, <laughs> man. That's your favorite station, My dude. My favorite station. I'm like, wow. Like, some of these DJs play some, like, really nice, like, Saturday night mixes. Um, yeah, yeah. But that's how they that's how they hook you, right? We have, <laughs> you know, uh, Sirius XM. I was with Sirius XM for 18 years. Wow. Before wow. I decided to, yeah. That's why I say OG, because I was there. <laughs> Or there was an XM with it. It was just serious when I first joined them, but uh, but yeah, that's what they do. They um, they you know have deals with big car dealerships all around America, and then you know get you addicted, and then send you a bill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's it's one of those where it's just like I, I love those where it's like hey, three months free, and then um you know but but here here add your card. Because then the fourth month will already charge you, right? So then you forget after yeah, exactly. three months, and then you see it on your bill. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Damn. Like, damn, what is this was, charge for? Like, I was supposed to cancel this, and then you just never do. Exactly. So, so you're, you're listening to Sway in the morning. Yeah. So, so that that's what happened. Now, now we currently just have it all the time. But, but it is great, and and kind of seeing and I, it is good. Yeah, and I can imagine for you, you know, being around it for so long and seeing the evolution and and its come up has mm. probably been something that's you know an extraordinary kind of achievement. Yeah, it, it was it was it was really cool. I, I started to work there. Uh, it would have been I was there for eighteen years, so it, was, it would have been twenty years ago. So it was two. It's been two years since I left. And um, back then, nobody knew how to say serious. They called it Cyrus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was before. It was back when there were two uh, satellite stations competing. Sirius on one side, XM on the other. Uh, eventually, they merged. Um, like why, and, not? Uh, why not? You know, why not? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, But I was there before Howard Stern. I was there before Sway. I was there before, you know, I was the first live morning radio host there uh, 18 years ago. Um, it was a great place to work. Um, it's still, from what I understand, I have a lot of friends who are still there. Including Sway, um, <laughs> and I, from my understand from what from what I from what I hear, it's still a great place to work. Uh, I only left because it was time for me to kind of uh, switch up my life and move to the UK. But otherwise, no, it was, it's a uh, it's a great service doing wow. really cool things. That's, yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. Well, 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 thank you for that. And and before we get into anything else, right? So obviously. You know, you're chilling with villains. Um, so it doesn't have to be now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. But, it's, but, but at least before the end of the episode, you we, we would love to have a villain name attached to you. It could be any villain in pop culture, history, oh. or it could be one that you create. We've had a few people create um, their own uh, villain name. Um, but yeah, it, it could be one you relate to. It could be one you just think is really freaking cool. Uh, whatever it is, mm. so yeah, we, we'll let you have some time to sit on that if you like. Yeah, let me uh, let me think on that for a I minute. I know it's a tough question. I know it's a tough it's question. It's good though. It's good. I like it. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I it's, like the idea. We 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 tend to have you know, as as much as we all get along here on the pod, we we also have 
pretty pretty varying uh point of views when it comes to things which to each other sure. we come off as the villain and stuff so we we try to find our <laughs> right. you know find our ways to be equally the hero of the story as well so hopefully you, you could come up with somebody that that resonates with you well you know and and to me that indicates like actual friendship and brotherhood because you know if you can't be real with the people you love the most or you trust the most who, who are you gonna be real i never trust well, I never trust people who are always nice. Mm. Interesting. Because I'm like, where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? <laughs> As a true New Yorker. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, from the Bronx, baby. Let's oh. go. I'm from the Bronx, so nice. no, you know, if you if you if you're like, I love you so much all the time. Uh, I know you full of, I know you I know you're lying. You're suspect. I know you're lying and I don't trust you and I'm not gonna tell you anything, I'm not gonna let you near me. Larry, Larry, look, the first time you went out of state, whenever whenever it was, and like you had that first sort of either southern interaction or sort of any kind of interaction that was just like, Hey, good morning, how are you? It's just like <laughs> Yeah, you're like you're like, Who are you? Yeah, exactly. Like, hold on, man. <laughs> Why are you so and nice? They don't, and they don't know how to deal with you. They don't, you know, I, I still get in trouble because I'm the guy, you know, like I said, I'm from the Bronx. So, you know, I'm the guy who has said, uh, you sure are feeling safe today, aren't you? <laughs> uh, you know, people don't make it home alive for what you just did. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting because, you know, I, I've been to, you know. I've been to I've been to Maui. They're super nice out there. I've been to you know Texas. I've been to Florida. I've been to Iceland. The nicest people you've ever met. You just want to flex that you've been to. I'm sorry. Places. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that. <laughs> They're nice places. They all are. these places that you know people. Mm -hmm. You know the life ain't as rough. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Like my my thing, and it, it's incredible. You know that you're from the Bronx. Our, our studio is at where we where we're at now. Uh, we're we're in Mount Vernon. Uh, so literally, oh you know, no, right, right next door. <laughs> Whoa! What do you mean? Oh no! Money earning Mount Vernon, <laughs> <laughs> the Lost Borough, <laughs> the Lost Borough. <laughs> So are you are you are you driving past Jitty on the way to work then? <laughs> yeah, like I I, I, did, I, you know, I saw I saw D, I saw DMX at a gas station once. <laughs> Yo. Oh wow! I love yeah, the hometown right. references. R.I.P. R.I.P. to a bro. <laughs> I know, but Diddy Diddy reps uh, Diddy reps Nuro. I think more than he does Mount Vernon. No way! Mistaken. Get out! He reps Harlem more yeah. than anything. <laughs> He's a big old faker. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, smoking like a true villain. <laughs> Listen, don't. <laughs> I have love and respect for him, but come on now. You know, it's, it just, is like, it's just like, it's just, well, you know, it's like he, he just wants to, he's either trying to, depending on who he's talking to, he's either trying to be, you know, doubly hard or doubly soft. Mm. So he's one Depending of those on dudes that Larry was talking about. He was like, I don't know. Right. I don't trust you. <laughs> but you know what but you know what I mean, right? Like, like nah, he doesn't yeah. want to come off too too, you know, too common, too down, too down home country, right? Yeah. Then it's like, you know, then it's like I'm from I'm from Harlem because, you know, all the white folk like Harlem. Um uh, uh, and I should know I'm one. I'm, I am a white folk, so uh, <laughs> I can confirm. And, uh, I can confirm. <laughs> I can confirm that white folk like Harlem, um, <laughs> just not too far up now. Twenty <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, fifth. Listen, that six train gets very empty at ninety sixth Street. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's like one hundred and sixteenth on the two, and then it's over. <laughs> And then you and then you clench until you get to Parkchester where J Lo was. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jenny um, from the block. Yep. There at Castle Hill. Shout, shout out to the Castle, Castle Hill Castle Hill. Station. <laughs> Castle Hill. Ooh, baby. Yeah, that, catch the that's the bus in Castle Hill. Yeah, that's the shout to the twenty two line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was always a, a four, five, six, and two, four, five, and six. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm mainly Two, on the four, six. Five, and six. I'm mainly on the six. That's my main. That's my yeah. main train. Yeah, because because uh, we're I'm originally from uh, 183rd in Jerome. Wow. That's... Yeah, baby. I'm not lying to you. I'm from <laughs> hey, Jerome. Road, baby. Wow. Yeah. My my aunt my aunt is <laughs> from from Burnside over there uh, near over there. Oh, and... oh, 
Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. Still there anymore, <laughs> Burnside, that was rough when I was a kid, and I'm an old man. Oh yeah, it's it's still it's still that spot over there, there in High Bridge and all that. It's, it's still the same. It's still yeah, the same. I used to I used to go by the first places I used to buy records were on Fordham Road. Wow, that's where my mom just retired from. She she worked in housing. Yeah, in Fordham Plaza. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. At Fordham Road, we used to go to uh, the Alexander's Department Store and get my husky clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not not for nothing, Larry. I think you grew up in <laughs> you you grew up in a. I guess I'm not going to say st- the state of New York, but you grew up you grew up in the parts of New York where music, pr- like. Very, pro- very, very prominent. Thrived. Right. I had a record yeah, store yeah. down the block where I where I moved in. Like when I lived where I live in Parkchester, like we had a record store before it got bought out, and like it's just an empty lot now. But where where in Parkchester was the um, name of the store? Um, man, I, I'm gonna have to look Come it up. On, man. I'm gonna have to look it up because you, you know I used to hang because we first of all, my, my, you know, I'm from a typical Bronx family. Bronx families move a lot. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. You know, usually in the middle of the night. And then, uh, and, then uh, and then, you know, yes, yeah, so I spent a lot of time in Parkchester. Um, but then we eventually moved to Pelham Parkway, which was the fancy place. Hey, Pelham Parkway. And let's go. Pelham Parkway. Shout out to Pelham Parkway. And that's, and that's, that's where, where the, my family still lives. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. My, my cousin yeah. lives over there, uh, right under the train, right, right by the two train. Um, uh, ah, it's not. Which, you know which not? I don't remember the name of the block. Fake New Yorker. Fake, <laughs> Fake New Yorker. Fake New Yorker. I'm, I'm about to, yeah, I think I think I know my villain name. Oh. What is it? Bronx Bronx Bomber, baby. Oh, hey. we got a first one. We got a first one. The Bronx Bomber. I gotta drop a bomb for nice. that. Nice. That is that. But is, no, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> but no, because we used to, you know, because we had a, we used to live on Pelham Parkway South and mm. Barnes Avenue, so we would, were right in between the Dyer Avenue train going to, you know, yeah. on the five, and then the two, which stopped on uh, Pelham Park, the Pelham Parkway stop on the two train, above, you know, the above ground L, where the, um, uh, all kinds of stuff, like loads of loads of stores and stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's a strip of I stores think, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it was like the Met, the Met supermarket was like there when I was a kid. That's incredible. Yeah. It's oh, it's called Harmony Records, by the way, the record store. I know Harmony. I spent money at Harmony Records. <laughs> I spent a lot of money at Harmony Records. <laughs> I spent a lot of good twelve inch singles, a lot of twelve inch records. There. Yeah, I was buying mainly because mm-hmm. th- I just started getting into vinyls. Like just recently, okay. So yeah, I tend to look for movie soundtracks. Like uh, the first vinyl, uh, okay. the first vinyl I ever bought was the pulp, the Pulp Fiction, um, soundtrack. Wow, that's like my favorite. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's one of my favorite films of all time. So, oh, uh, wow. I, I had to nice. go for that. And then I just recently bought um another vinyl in Iceland when I was out there, and it because I found a record store out there too, and I'm just like. I have to go in. <laughs> like I, I just yeah. need to just you, you to see. You can't not go in there. Yeah, and, you know why? Because it's all, almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's equally as much as it is itself actually music that you can play and all that. It's equally also a museum. Like I can go in there actually touch and it's a museum that you can actually interact with. Like, wow, this came out in the sixties. Yeah. No idea but, this was out then. <coughs> Harmony is where I used to get my twelve-inch disco singles that I heard on. Uh, uh, the original WKTU. Wow. And so they would have like, the, big, the big 12 inch vinyl records that used to be on the wall. Oh, um, because the, because uh, Joe's, which was in my neighborhood, didn't, it was good for 45s and good mm-hmm. for albums, but not good for 12 inch dance records. This is before I learned how to get on the train and go into the city. But I could, I could walk to Parkchester. Of course. And, um, and I would go, yeah, I would go to Parkchester and there would be, there was like the uh, was was the oval that the oval was in Parkchester. Yeah, yeah, the oval. Right? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's the oval. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the with the movie, you go to the movies, oh, some record man. stop in, and uh, and there was an arcades. Arcades was the ghetto version of Chess King, and one of my really good friends used to be uh, used to be a clerk there. So I would go and get my shiny shirt for going to the disco, 
go see a movie, buy some records, and then walk home. Oh, what a night. <laughs> what a night. <laughs> what a night. So, <laughs> no, that was no. <laughs> like, I can do That's half of those things now. <laughs> yeah. Like, after the disco, like, I'm like, guys, like, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, I'm beat. I'm going home. It's like, what do you mean? You don't want to watch a movie? You want me to sit down and watch a two hour movie? Listen, right now? yo, shout out to Boy, yeah. shout out to Bow Tie Cinemas that I, I, I saw a lot of films there as a kid. And unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, it got bought out and there's a Marshalls there now. You know, capitalism oh. how it works. You know, <laughs> capitalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, yeah. now I, uh, when I walk through <laughs> Marshalls, I, I'm reminded of, of the films I saw there and the popcorn spilled. But, you know, that's um, that's not far from where J-Lo lived. Nope. Yep. Castle Hill is not too far from there. It's the next stop. It's next stop. Shout out J-Lo. Shout Castle. out Ben Affleck. Um, <laughs> 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 but, but Larry, let, let me ask you this because... Obviously, you know, you, you grew up here, uh, you know, as a New Yorker, you know, you grew up, yeah. you, you, you've you seen music sort of, tra- I mean, obviously us as well transcend, but even for you, even more, right? Like, ha- how, did, yeah. how did it all, like, how does that all kind of, like, you kind of looking back at it now, you're like, damn, like, we went from from having to put this, this disc, in, like, this vinyl in this pl- record player, right, to now, literally, you just pick up your, your phone, and you go on Spotify or Apple Music, and you could just yeah. your just any playlist you want is there. I mean, I kind of have always evolved kicking and screaming because I don't like change, <laughs> no. and I like the old I like I like the old way of doing things. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was all about the vinyls, all about forty fives. Uh, my parents, you know, I started playing records from my parents' house parties when I was a kid, literally when I was like six and seven, wow. <laughs> I learned really, I learned really quickly um, that I could stay up as long as they would keep dancing. <laughs> <laughs> he gamed the system. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yo, I figured it so out. I figured I, it out. I figured it out. So my sisters would have to go to bed early and I could stay up with the, with the adults. And so <laughs> I learned, you know, I learned really fast. And, um, and so, you know, it was really fun, you know, when I got older and I got to kind of have, start to kind of my parents weren't really strict i was the first born i was the only boy and they were all about me kind of you know flexing myself and getting out into the world mm-hmm. so i was going to discos and clubs in the city from like around 14 or 15. wow um yeah i used to you know get on the train and go to places like roseland and new york new york and xenon and you know i was always tall and um had a nice jacket you just always had to wear a jacket and shoes back then you couldn't do sneakers tennis shoes it was like you had to look formal yeah 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 and, you know, i knew i knew how to look formal and um and so i got to be hanging <coughs> in the disco world and then as i got older i got intrigued by the the clubs further downtown which were like the rock and roll clubs the punk oh, clubs okay and those were and those were where you could just kind of look like a rat we would call it um but then you know but then what was really funny was when i would be commuting back and forth because that was usually a good hour on either the two or the five train coming home all right that's when i would that's when i started to hear things that uh originally were called the get down and the get down the get down was the first version of hip-hop right they didn't call it they didn't call it Hip hop or rap, they called it the Get Down. I'm assuming what, the that, get down, that's what that Netflix series is about, right? I don't know if you, yes, if you've ever and seen it. it yeah, but, yeah. I, I saw every minute of it, and they filmed <laughs> in my old, and they filmed in in Jerome. Know, they filmed, they filmed in my, Jerome, yeah, yeah. They filmed in parts of my old neighborhood, and it was, you know, that was where, um, you know, black folk, particularly, were taking the disco beats and starting to rhyme over them and play with them and. You know the first the first hip hop records were really disco records. We're talking all of them, mm. and um, and so it was really fun and confusing, but cool to watch it all because New York during that period of time. I'm so grateful I was alive and alert during that time because New York was where disco was banging and. You know, you if you if you look the right way, you can get to any disco in town, uh, including Studio Fifty Four. If you were brave and you were 
white getting <laughs> into the punk clubs you know um i was a little brave and very white um, <laughs> But if you knew, but if you were from a place like the Bronx um, or, you know, the dark, the deep places of Queens, like Jamaica, then you could, you could, yeah, you could, you could get exposed to this new art form that was happening only on the trains and on the streets and in, on the corners and in, you know, in unmarked clubs that were, you know, illegal places to dance because you weren't supposed to be there. Right. Um, and that was all happening in New York city within a 15 year span. Yeah. So that was, so that was, you know, how could I not want to work in the music business after growing up around that? You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, it was, it was, it was very easily and quickly part of my DNA. Because I didn't, you know, even though my I don't come from a musical family, my dad was, my mom and dad were both uh, music fans, mm -hmm. because, and, and I was, and they had me when they were really young. You know, my dad was into, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and oh, Janis Joplin. All, things, all things Woodstock, right? And my mom was into uh, soul music, Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight and you know, my dad was also into doo-wop music. So, you know, he would listen to the WCBS FM doo-wop shop on <laughs> Saturday nights. And so so there was always, even though no one in my house could play or sing, including me, um, it was just always around. It was yeah. always there. It was a thing that kind of, you know, we were a poor working class family, poor working class Italian Catholic family in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Um, very specific that that's 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 right on the head you know, <laughs> and you know and we and we you know we were raised in in thank god wonderfully diverse racially diverse we you know it was it wasn't we weren't part of the segregation we yeah. lived in neighborhoods that were that were black and latino and yugoslavian it was a big yugoslavian community near where i was raised really? and, wow, interesting yeah i know i know i never understood that but i loved it because the food was great <laughs> um and and you know you know where you know i was so it was always music was what people reached for to distract themselves from the hard lives that they were living mm -hmm. yeah and because because no one had money in our neighborhoods no one right it was not one it wasn't like you know everyone's poor and that family was rich everybody was poor everybody was swapping off food and helping each other with you know keep the lights on and oh your phone got turned off let's get a couple bucks together and help you get your phone back on it was that's what i was raised around so the music was it was relief it was sweet relief it's also universal you know? language yeah, and you know, so, and you go into different houses, and it would be, you know, I would go hang out with my friend Grafton in his mom and dad's apartment, and it would be listening to Isaac Hayes and, you know, Herbie Hancock, and then we'd go to our friend Willie's, you know, apartment across the street and listen to his grandmother's salsa music, and then they would come to my my apartment, my parents' apartment, and they'd hear Janice and. And, you know, Diana Ross, it was just like, but there was always music. Yeah. That's awesome, that, man. That is incredible. I feel, and, and like, it's great because I, I feel like I was raised the same way. You know, I, you know, equally from my mom, who's, I'm a first generation Dominican um, here. Ah. So my, you know, my mom, I was, I was brought up on all the, you know, the, the 60s, 70s and 80s salsa the, and 90s salsa and, and merengue that, that she came up on. But then mm. equally, I had, you know, first generation cousins that were also here who came up on Tribe Called Quest and Mos Def and, you know, yeah. all the backpacker hip hop stuff. So, like, I equally had, like, a best of both worlds, like, kind of thing always going on with me. So when I found Harmony Records, I was just like, it felt like like heaven for a short time. Like when when I was yeah. in the area. Because I was just like, yo, like, I, I mean, feel like I could get anything contemporary, but also, hey, 
like Jimi Hendrix, oh, I heard of this guy. Like, what's this about and stuff? Like, I I also spoke to the clerk there a lot. I don't remember his name, but like, I I spent some time there after buying my record. I would just like just kind of kick it there because I was just also that much invested in the in the music itself and just the genre itself. And the great thing about Harmony in particular, <laughs> a lot of record stores during that period would be if you were particularly if you were a kid. And when I say a kid, like you know, a teenager yeah. or in your early twenties. If you said, who's Celia Cruz? They would say, let me play it for you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's <laughs> like, what that guy would why, do. Why not, why not just show you? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? They would be like, it was It was very common back in those days to audition records before you bought them. Yeah. You know, it was even like that when, you know, there, was, there were stores like that, the few indie stores that, you know, uh, that I used to go to when I was a young adult. You know, you'd go in and, and the owner would put aside records because he knew you came in every Saturday with, you know, whatever money you had. And he'd say, I've got these tracks just for you. And then he'd audition them for you. And knowing that you might buy one or two of them, but someone would be hearing them and they would come to the counter and say, yeah. what is that? And then they would, and yeah. then they would buy it. You know, and it was just, it was, it was, music was a different world then. And because you had to buy the records and you had to carry them home, you only bought the stuff you knew you were going to listen to. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Like, I only got a couple bucks here. Like I got to, exactly. I got to make sure I'm going to be playing this. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good sales right? tactic you, from the, from the clerks. Right. <laughs> because if, you know, because if I, you know, even when, when I was, you know, I was too young to work and I was getting an allowance from my parents and I would spend my allowance on records. I knew that it was seven long days before I saw that money again. And when you're, you know, 10 or, you know, 10, 11, 12, that's a long time, right? Yes. Feels like a lifetime. <laughs> so you better make sure those records are good. <laughs> and, you know, so you just, it was a different kind of experience. It wasn't as disposable because you had to work for it, you know, mm -hmm. which is kind of what I miss. I mean, even though I like the, <clears throat> the convenience of music now and technology, I miss the days when you had to work to get your record the record didn't exist until you owned it. Exactly. Yep. You know? Yep. Oh, um, the new Drake drop. We got to go pick it up. Listen, oh, when, thank it me, yo, when I tell you, JB, <laughs> when Thank Me Later came out, yeah, iPods were out, but I didn't. I couldn't afford an iPod, so I had to play it off my Walkman. So I walked over to Harmony. I told the guy, hey, you told me you have it today. <laughs> it's June 10th. What's going on? He's like, I got the box right here, buddy. And he he, he whipped out the, the disc for me, and, and he got it for me. And, you know... And that feeling, though, of like, oh, I'm putting this in the Walkman, press and play, and my world changes. It's it's so cool. It's, yeah. it's still it's still I still have a Walkman now. I actually have a I have a tape player that I got. It's a Japanese import, a Sony a Sony Walkman that I got. Um, because I wanted to specifically listen to the Guardians of the Galaxy one volume one soundtrack <laughs> on tape. I wanted to listen to That's it on amazing. tape. That is great. That's amazing. <laughs> like I wanted to uh, listen to it that way. <laughs> I do too. I actually, when I moved from America to the UK, I carried uh, tucked in one of my bags an old CD discman I had that I could only hold together with Scotch tape. Wow, it was so old. That's how I held up, mine I together. <laughs> But I couldn't, but I couldn't let go of it because it was every, it was my lifeline to sanity and music. Man, it's everything. It's Did, everything. I used to fall asleep with my Walkman on, and like he just my alarm would be waking up to the <laughs> <laughs> from it uh, like <laughs> from it skipping and stuff. See, I, used like, to, <laughs> I used to have a boombox and and it would it was you know like I would put it on knowing that it would stop playing. Yeah, and. Uh, and that's how I knew I was, when I woke up a few hours later to use the toilet, I would know, oh, well, there you go. I've been out for a while. <laughs> yeah. It, and it, it's just, it's incredible. I, I'm even now just reminiscing on, like, my kind of first experiences as well, like, with the Walkman. And then even, you just mentioned, like, the, the iPod. Like, the iPod was, like, Yo. revolution. Like, I was just like. How many songs? A hundred? Over a hundred? <laughs> but, but then, like, the use of, you know. Lime wire and such to get yeah, those songs you know. onto your iPod, <laughs> <laughs> and like even Napster. even like figuring that oh, out. No, right? Napster was revolutionary, man. Napster was is basically the br the blueprint everything. the blueprint for all the streaming stuff now. That's you, true. Sean sure. Parker, yo, that that was some serious stuff that that happened there with yeah. that. 
it, and it, and it and, and it turned the industry on its head because it's just like oh like how do we monetize this? Yeah, I was just gonna say that 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 kind of became the thing, especially when like everything started becoming more digital. It's yeah. like well, no one's really buying records anymore. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. that. I'm glad that the record business is still a thing yeah. because people, again, we're, we're talking about it now. We'll still go and, and, and pick some up. Like yeah. my sister has like a little vinyl thing and, you know, she just bought the Weeknd's album. Olivia oh, Rodrigo's nice. Album. Okay. Yeah. And, but right now it's become like, especially for the artists, it's like, yo, how are we going to get paid <laughs> if people are not buying See, these like well, records that's the and thing. now it's based off streams? Yeah, unfortunately, the, that's still a very strange and swampy kind of vague thing there with the whole streaming because artists now they major like the majority of their money if we're being honest they make it off of touring like they have they have to tour true. is that a fact Very that's true. a fact they have to tour like that's they, a fact. if that's because a fact. they're not really eating off of your streams on youtube you and get stuff. one dollar per a million plays <laughs> yo like it's so dumb it's like what do you mean yo what do you out, mean shout out to our sponsor anchor <laughs> yeah exactly no but it's it's, it's very true and you know it's funny because as we're reminiscing, I'm thinking about how um, I was already an editor at Billboard when Napster started, and we all had to sign contracts saying that we wouldn't use Napster Damn. Um, because we were in the business of right. music, Holy and we cover shit. the business of music. So we w- it, w- it would be grounds for termination if they found out that any of us had Napster accounts. Imagine that. And, yeah, it's true. And you know, and I you know, I can't tell you how many uh, record executives I interviewed back in those days, and they, um, I th- you know, uh, <laughs> they they just barely believed in CDs back in those days. So I remember, you know, talking to Tommy Mottola, you know, the king of Sony Music, and saying, okay, so. There's this thing. It's called an MP3. <laughs> it's a thing. It's real. <laughs> it's out there. <laughs> what What do you think? And he goes, never going to happen. Never going to work. Because people like you want to own the records. They want to hold them in their hands. And I'm like, yeah, but then, you know, like I, remember, I remember this interview clearly because <laughs> it was for an article I wrote for Billboard, God, like almost 43 years ago. And it was an interview David Bowie, and David Bowie was he was the one who started the whole thing. I was interviewing him about a record he was putting out at the time, and he goes, "You know, I'm really, you know, seriously thinking about putting this out digitally." And I said, "Well, okay, explain to me what that means, because you know we had just started to get used to jewel boxes and CDs." And he goes, "Well, you know, you can have this file." And it's called an MP3. And, it, you know, it's this tiny little thing. And you can download it onto your computer and then play it back. And it's the same quality as a record. And he's telling me all about this. I go to my editor and say, okay, so David Bowie, the biggest rock star on the planet in the history of <laughs> rock and roll, is telling me about how he wants to put out his music on MP3s. There's a story here. We should do it. So three of us at the magazine started working on this story. So we went to talk to all these big executives. Not one of them thought the, he, that Bowie was right. Not one of them. Every single one of them said it's not going to be a thing. Man, if they'd even listen to David Bowie, then like it's you're lost at this point, bro. Yeah, I mean, so it's like it's not going to be a thing. I'm telling you it's not going to be a thing. We'll see the end of vinyl and cassettes because there were still records back in the day when you could buy <coughs> an album on CD, cassette, and vinyl. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you know the the uh, universal consensus among all the top executives in the industry was that CD and that, that vinyl and cassette would go away. You know, uh, was more likely to go away then MP3s would be likely to replace CDs. The CDs and mini discs, which never took off. Yeah, mini discs, that was, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. But, the, but mini, mini discs were what they were all predicting was going to take over because it would be a chance for you to own the music, but it would be smaller so you could carry it in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. That was, that, they, and, were, they had the right idea. It was just, they had to find a way to, well, none of those people are in any business anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, none of, seriously, none of them are in the business anymore. Yeah, do, at all. Do you think, I think a lot of it may be due to 
maybe like CDs, especially at the time, like it didn't sort of quote unquote overstay its welcome. I, I feel like the transition from CDs to like digital happened a lot quicker mm -hmm. than from like vinyls to, to CDs, you know? So I, I think the longevity of it was what, what got people that like, no, like we just transitioned into this. Like, I don't think we're going to see anything new come yeah, up within but, the next, you know, few years. Yeah, and like look bro, how quick I, I, the pushback was way crazier for MP3, man. Like it, it was pretty yeah, tough. Yeah, pushback, pushback was crazy, but CDs were always on like a weird ground because they were more fallible than vinyl, right? Even if you had a record that skipped, remember the skipping record? Yeah, yeah. You would put a you'd put a penny on the tone arm. Remember that? <laughs> and right? then that's it. 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 And that would fix it. And then it. You, it would be, it would, then it would fix it. You know, uh, it was getting increasingly common for CDs to skip. Yeah. When you put them in a player. And, and, you know, if you didn't go for like the highest grade of manufacturing, those CDs would wear out over time. Yeah, yep. So it was, it was, it was a temporary technology. It was brilliant technology. But it was also limited because, right? Because as soon as people got a taste of making a record that was longer than uh, thirty-five minutes, because back in the day, an album could only be thirty-five minutes because you could only put seventeen <laughs> minutes per side of vinyl. That's crazy. Yo, these artists are like, damn. Yeah, because you, no, yeah, right. you had an A side thirty-five minutes. you had an A side and a B side, and that meant for, that was for tapes as well, because tapes yeah, had a certain so length could, that they could go for as well. Before they could snap. Yep. Because <laughs> <coughs> a, a one twenty minute cassette tape would snap or get tangled. Yep. And if you went longer than seventeen minutes on a side of vinyl, the sound would come like this. It would get very <laughs> muddied. So most people kept it within fifteen on each side of the vinyl. With a with the first round of CDs, you could do seventy two minutes, which meant you could do long. You could do double album sets on one CD. Yeah. And once they got a once they got a taste of how it felt to do to play nonstop music and give loads of tracks, it was inevitable that someone would try to figure out how to turn these things called MP3s into albums exactly. where you could make where you could put like, you know, dozens of songs. It'd yeah. be like Chris and, Brown make a forty hour album. I'm like, okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and and it's and it's cheaper. Yeah. It is, yeah. Because because manuf and it could be, as we learned through, you know, Beyonce, you could do it on a drop. On like a that. dime. Could, yep. Yeah. Because back in the day it would take at least two weeks. And that would be if you were like, you know, Whitney Houston. Uh it would take at least two weeks to to manufacture a record or a CD, usually it would take longer. Wow! But that, you you could get it turned around in two weeks if you were a superstar artist with a lot of extra money. Because mm. you also need the resources to have that kind of production, right? Yeah. So you know, because most pressing plants were required at least four weeks. Wow! <laughs> yeah. That's, that's... yeah, yeah, yeah. So and now they so can just drop an, whenever. It, yeah, I mean, people are doing it in their houses. <laughs> yeah. Legit got, during yeah. the I pandemic. Can't, I yeah. can't. I can't. I can't play shit, but I can make an MP3 in my house. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, just that's it's true. Bad, you know, so you ha you know, even though I miss my vinyl, yeah, I miss going to record stores and all that stuff, and I really, really, really miss. It makes me very sad that I don't get to do it the way I used to. You know, I acknowledge that this is the way it's going, and you got to keep. Yeah. You either got to. You either got to keep up. Or sit at home and become a dusty old mess, just you know, yeah, being angry and being yeah. angry and bitter. Yeah, that that's so that and that goes with anything I think yeah, in life. That, like that, if mm -hmm. you're just not changing with the times, you're gonna be held back. the The world is just gonna yeah. leave you behind. Yeah, yeah that, that's just the yeah. truth. Um, but what I what I what I will say right is is I'm always excited for for Fridays to come up because I know you do your new music moves right hashtag new uh, music yeah. moves. On, on Vero, music moves. and I, I just I, I get so overwhelmed because I'm like, wow, like these are just songs and artists that I have not even like scratched the surface on. So how, like, yeah. do 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 you are you all day just kind of just listening to music? Is that all that's day. what's playing? Wow, all day, <laughs> all day. The only day, the only days I'm not looking are Saturdays and Sundays. 
Um, those are no commuter days. Yeah, I'm glad. Um, I'm, unless, glad unless, <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless, I'm, unless I'm what. Unless I'm watching something like uh-huh. you know, like a show or a movie, but they're not they're non they're non computer days. Uh, otherwise, you know, even if I'm doing something else, I'm playing music in the background. You know, the the mandate for new music moves is to find between five and six new and emerging artists, and it has to be varied, right? Because if it's all hip hop, then the rock guys are going to get mad. If it's all rock, then the hip hop kids are going <laughs> yeah. to get mad. If it's all no, disco, no one's satisfied. <laughs> so, no one's satisfied. So you got to have like at least one of everything. Yeah. And then you have to have, and then you have to have a song that someone from the community picks and you stick it on there, and so they could see their, you know, their favorite song on the yeah. playlist. I saw, I saw you That's, shout out Ice Spice. I was like, let's go, no, let's go, the <laughs> yeah. Bronx. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you know, there you go. Right. It's a good track though. It's a good track. It and is a good Dominican. track. Shout out Ice Spice. Uh, <laughs> and, she's, and she's Dominican, not mad. Yep, yep. So, you know, um, so yeah, it's just a constant game of, of digging and digging. And, you know, it's really what I've been doing my entire life. Really what I've been doing my entire life, but it's also the way I've kind of, career's a funny word, but, you know, that's been my job in one way yeah. or another. I mean, I've, done a lot of other things and interviewed people and written a lot and all these different things, but it's all been kind of rooted in my curiosity about finding records that make me make my toes curl. Yeah. So, so would you say in a sense, it, it didn't really feel like much work for you then it, it was, it felt more, or, 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 or you could tell us, right? Cause maybe you're like, no, it did feel like work. Cause it's still stressful as hell sometimes, <laughs> but, but well, to your yeah, point, sometimes, right? Sometimes it is, Sometimes, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, if you love what you're doing, it's not work, right? That right. cliche is Absolutely. really true. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, you know, look at my nice, smooth hands. Not <laughs> from digging ditches, right? I don't dig ditches all day. So I have a blessed life. I sit in a computer, in a room with a computer, and I listen to music. Woo, woo, woo. Don't cry for me. <laughs> um, but, 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 but it is stressful because, you know, it, you pick the wrong record or you pick too many records that people don't like. And then, you know, your credibility starts to fall after a while. So there's always, and there's always a game, you know, I worked, I, one of my mentors, I've had a lot of really great people teach me things over the years still to this day. But one of my greatest mentors was this man, my editor, my late editor in chief at billboard, his name is Timothy white. And he taught me many things, but the one thing he drilled into me is that, um, Ain't no pride in second. Mm. That's the first one who if lost. Not, yeah. He's like, if you're not first, you, yeah, if you're not first, then you're a loser. <laughs> second place thought, is the I first thought, one who I lost, thought, bro. I thought Larry was going to hit us with a cliche if you're not first, you're last. He's like, no, no if you're not first, you stink. You're a loser. Go <laughs> You're home. a loser. You're a loser. No, you're a loser. And so, you know, but, I mean, so it made me super competitive, but, it gave me, I'm just going to be, you know, sometimes you have to toot your own horn. <coughs> it's giving me a fucking slamming resume. Come on. Because course. while I've been, while I worked for him and while I was at Billboard, I was the first guy to write about Mariah Carey. I was the first guy to write about Britney Spears. I was the first guy to write about Crystal Waters and CNC Music Factory. And, you know, those were mine. I broke those records. Sheesh. Everyone else can. What a flex. Everyone can step, <laughs> but um, everyone can step, but I won. You Let's know, I've go. interviewed. Mad- yeah. I've interviewed Madonna. I've, inter- <laughs> <laughs> I've interviewed Madonna nine times. You know. It's oh like, my god! Shout out goodness. Madonna. She's on zero. <laughs> Did you put her on to zero to too? She's- no, she was already there. Oh, uh, but, um, there was like, yo, Madonna, he texted her. He's like, yo, you got to hop on Vero. Like, check out my new music moves. She's like, check out my there. new music moves. <laughs> She's like, been there already. She's like, Larry, I got but, it. But you know, but you know, so you got to keep, you know, so that's that's my calling card. That's my cred. And now I got to keep that going. Of course. Right. Yeah. So that was like, that was decades ago. I had dark hair and a lot of it back when I was doing that. <laughs> You know, now I'm gray and bald. So, you know, but you still got to do it, right? Because you still want to be the first and, um, you know, still doing it. It's fun. 
great, great fun. But it's it's really stressful. And um, everybody's got the next big thing. And the people who say they have the next big thing don't. <laughs> um, just like if someone says he's down, he's not down. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, just let me Yo, know. I'm down, I'm down. Yeah, just text me. Let me know. Me. I'll, I'll be there. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'm your guy. I'm your guy. You know, back, at, back, at, back in my day, we used to say those were Urkels. Oh, you know what an Urkel is? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. From the sitcom, from the like, sitcom, like right? Steve Urkel, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I want to, I want to say two things. One, we're all color coordinating. By the way, we're all. Yeah, we yellow. are. We are like legit. Are you right? kidding me, Larry? Look at this. <laughs> I'm wearing like, like it's that, very yellow. That's funny. I, I like that. This is incredible that we all. So, this. so, so, song choice: Coldplay, Yellow. <laughs> Playing right now, confirmed. There you go. That's right a good there. Song. Yo. Great song. And then second thing, La- Larry, that's a, that's another thing. So A, you know, I wanted to have you on. We wanted to have you on just for the simple fact that we just love to have conversations with anyone. We 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 welcome all and, and you know to come to to talk about things that we talk about. And then two, right, just kind of like when we followed each other and then, you know, just doing my research, I was like, wow, like he like he is an OG like yo, he look, been, look at the, yo, he, the people he's he's spoken with <laughs> and, and like to to your point just now right like hey like Britney Spears Madonna like that's me like I put I put them on so and and that and and to not even not even to to credit you on that right but more for the for the point that you were making of hey like my mentality has been like I have to be number one like I have to do this I have to do that and it's sort of how and, and you know we we said all the time as well with us, right? Like that's something that we, that mindset that we want to continue maintaining as well uh, when we, you know, have guests on and, and the stuff that we do because we, we love this too. You know, it, it just doesn't feel like work, like the production meetings, you know, sitting here yeah. in front of the microphone, having a guest like yourself on it, it. It's just, again, to your point, just a lot of fun. Of course, there's some stressful moments, right? Like, uh, you, you know, dealing with, you know, a- any technical issues or dealing with, you know, kind of, like a mental, you know, because sometimes your brain does need a, a a nice little, you know, break, right? Because you're you're just not able to be as creative as you want to be. Um, but all those things aside, like I will take that any day if I can continue doing this. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and and it shows. It shows when you listen to the show because somehow you find a, a way in with anybody you're talking to, you know, and. Um, it sounds like fun. I couldn't wait to come on because it sounds like, you know, when I'm listening to the show, I'm, I'm usually talking to my phone saying, well, I want to, I'm like holding my phone like this. Like I'm holding it right, right, right now for you on the camera. I'm like, but no, you're wrong because I said blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, it's good. I mean, you know, I think the next, I'll be, I'm going to be very curious to see what the next level is for you guys because the chemistry between the two is really good. The the vibe is really warm and friendly. Thank you. Um, you know, listen, listen. I'm a white gay guy from, from New York <laughs> who now lives in Wales. You know, wow, you live in Wales. Wales. Gee, shout, out shout out to the Welsh. Shout out to the Welsh. So so technically, so so on paper, right? What do I have in common with you two guys? Well, we discovered during the conversation, I have a lot in common with you guys. <laughs> a ton. Right? Yeah. So. You know, so, you know, you guys make your listeners feel welcome. You make your guests feel welcome. It's it's a thing. And it's it's a very tough thing to do. You know, one of the things I had to learn to do when I moved from writing to doing radio mm-hmm. is how to talk, but also how to listen mm. and and how to pay attention and how to, you know, how to make people feel at home by. You know, like you guys do it really well. It's called setting the table, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you want from your guest? Well, you have to tell them what you want by just by setting the table. Yeah. You talk a certain way, that makes me know I can say whatever the hell I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, sure. 
you know, whereas if you guys were a little bit more formal, then I would have been a little bit more formal. Yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, what, what you're doing here is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, man, we, we, we really we, appreciate we, that. We, it's we try it, from you, Larry. We yeah, really yeah, for real, that. for real, Larry. I oh, really, really nice. appreciate it because you know we we try to stay on brand with it. You know, chilling like, like that's <laughs> we right. we want to we want to kill the ice right there. Like, listen, there is there is no weird vibes here. We we want to make sure yeah. that you feel comfortable enough to to speak your mind. And you won't and, get much pushback. Yeah, and, and I and I want to ask you this, Larry, because you know, th- thank okay. you for first and foremost. Um, and, and you know, you saying you you know you you listen to to some episodes and such. I so, do. are you are you into like comic book films and TV shows? Are you in like, or or, or what? It what is sort I of? I am. I am into TV shows. I watch too much TV. <laughs> um, um uh into movies i'm not into comic books i'm sorry all good um yeah but but um but i think anyone who does what we do mm-hmm. um have we we part of our job even if it's not what we're doing at the minute is to know what's going on right so i'll listen to you so i could find out all right. Well, I don't read comic books, but I should know because someday someone's going to ask me <laughs> to have an opinion. So I should know the difference between this and that. Yeah. So I listen to the experts. You know, I, I, you know, it's not possible to be an expert on everything. Right. I know what I'm an expert on. Right. Don't try to come for me on certain things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> But you know the, the 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 real the real people who are in it for the long haul, and everyone loves to throw around the word legend or icon, which is all bullshit. Um, <laughs> but the people, but the people who might who might be able to fulfill that word, those words, are the ones who don't think of themselves that way because they're too busy getting on with it getting and done. being starving. <laughs> the job done and yeah. being. St- Starving for more and more and more and more and more and more. You look at some of the best actors in the world, and the ones who come, you know, I, I, and I've talked to some of the biggest names in the world, and the ones who come in, you know, all like smug, posy. First of all, it's never the biggest names. The biggest names are always the chillest, the coolest. Wow. I can tell you that right now. And I've been, like I said, I've interviewed everybody twice. The biggest names they walk in. Everyone around them is nervous. Yeah, yeah. But they walk in and they're like, "How you doing?" And they just sit down. They just get on with it. Yeah. Um, it's the it's the people who are on the come up, who think that you know. It's sort of like when people go to New York and they think they're behaving like a New Yorker. Oh. When New Yorkers are actually pretty. When New York when New Yorkers are really cool, but you know they think being a New Yorker means being a douchebag. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. It's the yeah, same yeah. thing. It's yeah. the same thing. Like they have to come in. They have to come into a room and they have the big time. And, you know, when people get into all of that and they're like, I know everything and, oh, well, I'm doing, you know, my show is about comic books. Yeah, I'm not really into that. And really nobody cares about that. Well, that's a lie. Exactly. (laughs) It's a lie. Yeah, yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. So, you know, it behooves you if you're going to be in our business, whether it be as a, a creator, a commentator, an observer, whatever. To know about everything, or right. at least understand it, and understand the place in it all. Like I don't know this whole gaming thing. I what are you all talking about? <laughs> but, but it's my job to know what what it's about, and to know the difference between you know solo gaming and group gaming, yeah, and yeah, these yeah. teams, and yeah, yeah. it's a whole. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole that. world, never, Larry. Yep, yep. <laughs> I would never do any of that nonsense, but okay. Yeah. And two of my nephews are in, in that world. They want to live in that world, so it's like I try to learn about that. So I could tell them, don't do it because you're not going to get there. <laughs> get there. But 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 my point is, I'm saying it in yeah. a long way. But you know, it's like um, I love what you guys are talking about, and I learn while I'm listening. And you know, yeah, you know, I don't want to listen to other people tell me what they think of. I don't always want people to tell me about the records I'm listening to mm. because then that makes me feel like I'm working and then it makes me really anxious because are they smarter than I am? 
Oh no, they're smarter than uh, I am. Oh, shit. It's like a little. <laughs> oh shit! It's like a mental sparring you do. Like, uh, like how are we doing? Yeah, this? <laughs> you know. It's either that or it's like you're a fucking moron and I can't listen. to that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, not, more more often than not, that's that's, a, that's how I feel. Like, yeah, yeah, legit, Larry. But, like we have we have conversations with each other and we're just like, yo, like, and even off mic and stuff, we're just like, dude, you're bugging, or or we're like, dude, you have to see my side of it. Or else we're not gonna get on with this, and sometimes we make it even a bit on on, on the podcast. Yeah. Sometimes we're just like, listen, like we're either not even seeing eye to eye, but we also love to admit that when one of us are wrong, or like that we actually can bring something to the table that maybe one one of us is more knowledgeable about than the other. So uh, at least we we uh, at least we're funny about it. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so so I want you guys to school me. All right, what's up? All right. Um, what is your number one book right now? The number one comic. Number one comic book? Just all time? Yeah. Of all time? Now, no, currently. Like what what's the what's your top shit? Well, Not what is top shit in the world, yeah. but what's yours? Well, with me right now, like I've so I've I've actually just been reading because the 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 world of com just like music right the world of comic books like reading comic books is just so vast it's it, like it's, it's just it's overwhelming it is overwhelming. It's overwhelming um so in terms of actually reading right now I'm actually just reading Spider Man Miles Morales like there's a, a a newer run that they have going on so that's what I'm reading but recently I've been reading more of like the older Batman stuff. Uh, like I, I recently read Batman, the long Halloween, right? So like for me, typically how I start getting into this stuff is if like we watch like a, a animated movie on it of the long Halloween. And so I was like, Ooh, that was like pretty solid. Like, let me read the, yeah. the graphic novel. And then I'm like, yeah. Oh, the graphic novel is way better than the animated <laughs> movie that came out. Um, Watchmen, like it oh, is. Oh yeah, Watchmen. Anything Alan doubt. Moore, yeah. Anything Alan Moore, we tend to like. That's the thing, Larry. Like we tend to gravitate more towards like the source material that's inspired what we're watching now. Yeah, we're we're more into the comic book films and shows rather than the comic book themselves in a sense. Yeah. So like, if we right, right, so if we watch, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. What were you no, say? yeah, exactly what Ariel kind of just said, right? If we know we're, we're about to, you know, watch something, like let's say if there was a new Watchmen film coming out, I might tend to go back and read, you know, Watchmen um, and, and along those lines. Or if a new character, right, is being introduced and like read more on the character. Like when Black, the new Black Panther came out, I started reading a little bit more on Namor, right, who was, who was in the film and stuff like okay. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? What do you do when you hear that, um, something is being made into a movie or a TV show and the person that they cast is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, um, so I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's very, it, it's, it's such a weird dynamic there because for me, I don't, I don't think whoever wrote the, like, I, I understand like an adaptation, right? Like you're doing a film adaptation or, or a show adaptation. Like for example, we're literally currently reviewing The Last of Us. So did you watch the the premiere? I don't know if you've seen the premiere on HBO. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the premiere, but I've seen everyone else is watching. It. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but I'll, the, I'll 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 watch I'll watch it later. But I haven't. Yeah, got it. The, this is a per, that, and this is a perfect example for what you just asked because one of the characters, um, Ellie, right? Um, they casted Bella Ramsey, um, and a lot of people were like. Not a good casting. She's not Ellie at all. And this is all prior to the show even releasing, right? So to me, it's like, how can you really judge somebody when you haven't even seen what they've done with the character yet? That's the thing. Like, people always jump to the phenotype first. It's just like, dude, like, what? I don't care what they look like. Or can they act? And, yeah, and can they can they uh, give so the, the role... <laughs> can they give the role the same tender love and care... That it was presented in the book or the video game yeah, or whatever exactly. the source material exactly. was. Because if the TLC okay. is still there, I'm fine with it. Exactly. That's more of how we so, stand with it. So how often do you want to send The Rock off on vacation so he stops doing these things? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my city. A shade to DJ? <laughs> I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Look. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's we, like every time I turn around, 
it's like the rock i'm like oh <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> Go on I, vacation, dude. But, Don't but you have he, enough money? Here, here's the thing that I will say about The Rock. It's like, first and foremost, Ariel and I are huge, you know, WWF, WWE yeah, fans. Yeah, we're wrestling yeah, fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't care about that but shit. <laughs> I, I get your point, no, though. No, my no. my, my he's, thing... He's, he's, he's not going to fuck you. He's not going to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, this episode I mean, is sponsored by Tara Mana, <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, don't you want to see someone else? Don't you want to see someone else get in there? I mean, t- typically the roles that he does, though, are all the like a role that I would probably just want The Rock in it because exactly. it's just like it's just like oh okay he's in a jungle somewhere and like doing <laughs> some cool shit like all right and we literally had this Ariel conversation. Just, Ariel just saw my face. <laughs> We but, call that but, in my in my in my neighborhood. We call that the mini stroke. <laughs> the mini like, stroke. Oh. Uh, but let me ask you this, Larry. What what are your what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Tom Cruise? Uh, he, he wishes he was taller, and he behaves like a short guy. <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. Yo, JB, I get yo. Right? I, I get what Larry's saying because like because Tom is like, no, I'm gonna do that. Tom, you you yeah, can't fly. I mean, you can't fly an F one jet. Like you can't. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> He either he either very obsessed with his height or he's got a really small dog, <laughs> and he's just he's just really out to like he's he's overcompensating for something. He's a super talented dude. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. But he but he's got the he's got to try too hard. Mm, okay, because I I personally and Ariel and I have this conversation all the time. Where in terms of because in my in my head, I'm I'm thinking like. Tom Cruise. I I think Tom Cruise is a guy that wants to perfect his craft. I think he has yeah. the mentality of yeah, yeah. if I'm not doing this, no one else is going to. Yeah, yeah. And so he like, does it. And I think Scientology also has a lot to do with what his mindset is, and, <laughs> and you know he thinks he's invincible, I mean, which I I'm he, fine with. I mean, For my I, entertainment, I'm cool with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, but you know, someday we're gonna find that graveyard of like dolls' heads. That you know, I mean, I really hope not. I, I hope that's not the case. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not the but, case. But I, I will tell you this: I, I will watch anything he does because I think he's, you know, I think at the core he's a good dude, and I'm one of those guys who has to think you're a good dude or a good a good gal if I'm going to watch you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think he's a good dude, and I think he, but I do think he has a hard case of short man <laughs> short man syndrome <laughs> sms sms <laughs> you know there was a song back in the 90s called short short man go listen to it you'll know what i mean <laughs> oh, um, God. but but you know i mean but you know so i you know, i think he's I, I i'm looking for here's what, what i really really think about tom cruise i'm looking forward to the day when he has to make peace with the fact that he's getting older and maybe stops taking these kinds of movies and starts doing the kind of movies I think he really wants to do, like Fifth of July, like, uh, you know, like Magnolia. Um, I think he's ultimately a very gifted actor. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a funny he thing. Is. Yeah, because a, 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 a Few Good Men was one yeah. of my first introductions to Tom Incredible. Cruise. You know, like a lot of these guys, you know, they fall into this world and then they are kind of trapped by it. And I remember interviewing... Uh, Jason Statham once I've interviewed him a few times what a nice guy yeah um, and, I, and I just said okay so you know like what happens when your hip breaks and like you can't just fix it you know and he's just like then I get to finally be an actor wow mm. so so you, you think Tom Cruise is in that same boat like he's feeling like that I think I think Tom Cruise is going to have a really hard time I think he's due for a really sad day when he can't do it anymore because wow. i think he also gets a th- i think he gets off on it of yeah. course he does 100%. of course dude uh, <laughs> have you seen you maverick know, <laughs> yeah i think he i think he gets off on it but i also think he is reckoning with the fact that has he won an oscar yet no no, no. He, he's he, nominated he, he might be he want he he wants one more 
than all the cookies in in the world. He wants one so badly. Um, And I think he is eventually going to have to choose one lane or the other. He's either going to have to become, you know, Sylvester Stallone looking like, you know, like (laughs) like an old leather bag. Expendables for a year soon. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Or he's going to have to just say, okay, I've I've proven my physicality a a thousand times over. Now let's go, let's go remind people that I have skill because he's got skill. Yeah. For for sure, he's and, a gene. He, yeah, and and sort of and be and be good with the fact that he's short. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's nominated for three Oscars for oh, wow. Born on the Fourth of July, yeah. Jerry Maguire, and Magnolia. Nice. Yeah. I think literally <laughs> said it, those, those he mentioned three. those three films. <laughs> uh, he was like, yeah, because I knew he was nominated for all three. Um, but and yeah. that that was gonna be my point about the the Rock and, and Ariel. You and I actually had a conversation where I'm just like, I hope the Rock finds a role that like brings out, you know, his sort of, you know, because what we've seen him in have all been the same. It, it's all been like the repetitive. Well, like I, I liked him in Gridiron Gang. When did Gridiron Gang come out? And when like, I was a kid. Like was, 03, yeah, yeah, right? Like 03, 04. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, let's be real. But he's going he's gonna to need to deflate the muscles, put on some paunch, and and he's gonna have to do two thousand six. The, the he's gonna have to do the superhero version of of a woman getting ugly, mm. right? How do you how do you know if an actress is going for an Oscar when she puts on a prosthetic nose, doesn't wear makeup, doesn't wear a wig? So so basically, right? Gary Oldman should have won every Oscar. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. There's that whole beating the shit out of his wife thing, right? But, oh, you know, that's yeah, another yeah, topic. yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. But, Gary I mean, Oldman? But Gary he's, Oldman. Oh, heart. Yeah. Heart is broken now. Yeah. Jesus. But he's going to, I mean, you know, The Rock is going to need to, is going to need to let go of the physical image in order for people to look at him past, in order for people to look into his eyes He's got to show them only his eyes and not his pecs and his arms. Ah, true. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. <clears throat> yeah. uh, because you know, there he seems like a, a lovely man. I've never met him. He seems like a lovely guy. He seems like he really wants to be good. I don't really have that much of an. Opinion. I've seen a lot of his movies, and to me, they're all kind of the same. Right. If I'm, if I'm being honest. Yeah. At least his uh, role, like his role is predominantly like. He made the, yeah, Fast Five great I mean, though. He made Fast Five great though. <laughs> yeah, Fast yeah, and Furious I mean, Five. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, the guy is magnetic. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, yeah. most electrifying man in sports entertainment. <laughs> right, and 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 he, you know, and he's got a good sense of humor. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, it would be really interesting if remember the movie. I don't know if you guys saw. The, the movie that Mark Wahlberg got nominated for an Oscar for. I think he even won for it. What? Was it The Boxer? The Boxer? Oh, oh, yeah, The Fighter. The Fighter. The Fighter. The Fighter. The, fighter. the fighter. Yeah, yeah. It was with Christian Bale. Christian oh, Bale yes, was, like, yes. he was super yeah, skinny. Yeah, he needs... The Rock needs to make a movie like that. Yeah. Then, I, I, then the world, then the world will be his. So he needs, like, way. he needs, like, sort of, like, the, the um... Damn, what the... What's his name? I forgot his name. Why did I... It's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, he did the movie The Wrestler for Darren Ar- Aronofsky. Uh... Oh, uh, uh, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke. Yes, he needs some sort of like this kind of R- Mickey Rourke yeah. kind of like vibe with, with without with... all the ba- without all the bad facial surgery. But yeah, yeah, Mickey I Rourke mean... looks. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Rourke looks crazy, but you know. But I mean, but but you know. But I mean, he's he. He needs to um, humanize because right now he's really he's, his wealth depends on his superhuman qualities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 the, and the beauty of his face. Um, he needs to be willing to look ugly and human. Yeah, and I, um, yeah, and, and, I, and a little bu- and a little busted, and then you know. <laughs> but here's the thing. But here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, I jokingly say, don't you want to take a vacation? But 
If it ain't broke, why are you trying to fix it? Yep. Mm. Like, I, I was, it, I was just going to say that. He's a businessman. He's still man. a young man. He's a businessman. He's still a young man, and I ain't mad at him. Right. Yeah, yeah. If I, but here's the thing. I'm also not his target audience, right? So that, you know, if I were, you know, if I was devoted to the genre of movies that he makes, then, yeah, I'd be like, okay, can the dude take a vacation with someone else could have swing into that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, because after a while, it's like, okay, you're being greedy. But I ain't never mad at someone making their coin. Mm, right. I'm never mad at someone who is, you know, riding the wave with the understanding that the wave eventually goes away. Yeah, you know? which, which he eventually, uh, I, I think the, the Rock being who the Rock is will eventually... Like know that. Well, I feel like he did that with wrestling. I feel right, like all right, exactly. It's, my time is up here. It's, it's exactly. time to move He's on like, to the next thing. It's time to move on to the next thing. And, and now you know he, he like again has his own um, production you know, his company. Own production company. He has his own uh, te tequila brand. Has uh, his own energy drink. He, like owns <laughs> XFL. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> like a third league, like NFL. Like I it, know, but wouldn't but wouldn't you love to see him? There was this movie I saw few years ago it didn't it was an independent movie so i don't think anybody saw it it was with um watch independent film guys uh uh ron shit, I don't know his name. the guy who played the beast on beauty and the beast and it was all about uh he played a hitman who was kind of at the end of his time being mm -hmm. a hitman he was getting older um i would love to see the rock play like a hitman who suddenly gets a conscience or a Sopranos mafia kind of thing. Something that is a little gritty, but that also plays to his physicality and his, and his, and his charisma. You talking about yeah, Dan Stevens? To... No, no. Hang on. What's his name? Ron Berman. Wait, Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman. Oh, I feel like, wait, wait, he's a Sherman? Uh, Ron Perlman, Hellboy. yeah, Hellboy, yeah. Hellboy, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ron, Ron Perlman is a fucking crazy dude, let me tell you something. <laughs> well, Guillermo, Le, Guillermo del Toro loves him for some reason, because he's been in every Guillermo del Toro film since, like, he started out. He's an awesome guy. He's yeah. an awesome guy, but... I ain't gonna lie. I've interviewed him about five times. He scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Cause he, yo, Ron Perlman just has this like strange like size to him, where it's just like, yo, you look way he's, bigger than you really are, bro. He's massive. Yeah, he's massive, and he just looks a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yo, back back when like the whole election was going on, and like, cause he's a huge, you know anti like trump dude yeah 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 i, I was just like Yo, he's I really a crazy wanna... liberal yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i was like i was like honestly like i'm not mad like because like any any <laughs> conservative right now is getting like because you you would think a guy like him would be conservative yeah, right yeah, but yeah. like he's not so i'm like all right cool no <laughs> ron perlman cool. is like ron perlman is like the the cliche biker dude like you right. think like he's like all right. mean I'm and like, stuff oh, yeah. this dude's definitely you know huge trump support he's like nah fuck trump <laughs> <laughs> No, he's the kind of guy you go see like in a biker bar and he's like, I love America. Right. But then he at the same time, at the same time, um, is insanely liberal. <laughs> yeah. Crazy liberal. <laughs> you know, I'm looking, you know, I'm sitting here scrolling my computer trying to find the name of this damn movie that nobody saw except me. <laughs> Ron Perlman. <laughs> the one viewer. <laughs> The one viewer, he said, all these movies, all these horror movies, all this shit, they did just one great indie. Let's see. And I just was like, Hand of God? Dude. No, no. It was, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. And I'm sure he has a ton, I'm movie. sure he has a ton of films under his Wait, from how long ago was this? Like about two years ago. Oh. The Last Victim? Maybe it was The Last Victim. Yeah, he plays a sheriff in that one. No, oh, no, no. Okay. Oh, he's from New York as well. Born in Manhattan. Yeah. Washington oh, Heights. Well, it's not, it's, the Big it's Ugly? Such, it's such a... No, that's not it. I mean, I was looking at that too. No, he plays the... Is it The Big Ugly? The Big I Ugly. I mean, from 2020 to 2022, yeah. he's done a lot of Anglo, shit. Anglo-American <laughs> relations go bad when a London mob boss invests in a West Virginia oil deal. Oh, no, that's not it. 
No, that's, that's not it. Uh, wait, wait, when you when you find it, uh, please send it to us. We'll, we'll check it out. We'll yeah, do a review. We'll all do a review. <laughs> we'll have Ron Perma come on for it. <laughs> We'll be like, you're, you're a Trump supporter, right? And then we'll, we'll just see what happens. Yeah, he's there. Optimus Prime <laughs> now, bro. That's crazy. Oh, and the new uh, yeah. Transformers? That's crazy. He's Optimus Prime. Um, what was I going to say? He's a though? good guy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Asher. Hey, Asher. Asher. All right, we're going to do yeah, a review. 2018. We're going to do a review of it then. Oh, he was also a producer on it. Uh, aging Hitman's yeah, a- last job going sideways, forcing him to redeem himself. Yo, they shot in Syracuse. Yeah. The the film grossed two thousand eight hundred and forty six dollars. All yeah, of Larry, I mean, all of Larry's yeah. money. <laughs> all of my money. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm gonna. He also, tra- he also charged me for. He also charged me for uh, for uh, popcorn. <laughs> uh, you know who else? Who, you know who was born in Syracuse though? Who? Tom oh. Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh God. <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> Going back to this now. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna name this episode let, Tom Cruise. Let, let me <laughs> let, let me ask you this, right? Because obviously, you know, you're <laughs> we we've obviously talked about it enough in terms of you know you're, you're a music guru. Uh, it's what you grew up in. It's what you love. So, how yeah. much does a soundtrack for a TV show or a film affect your viewing? Like, do you fo- do you tend to focus maybe more? Because to me, if maybe if the film or show isn't even all that if the soundtrack just just resonates Yo, with me Boba Fett. I can I like <laughs> I don't know what to tell you like I'm still kind of enjoying this yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean and yeah, then when, when the, it has all of it it's just the, like the, the wrong music in a movie will kill a movie yes like the, the, the right really music, bad and, needle and, drop like a really bad needle drop like dude why yeah. is this playing right now yeah and and the right and the right song will will take a really bad movie and make it good Mm, equally yeah because because it's giving the movie atmosphere because music is when it works it should be atmosphere that you only sort of notice so if you're really noticing the music it's either because the filmmaker wants you to notice it or because the movie sucks Mm. and you're looking for anything to keep yourself Sa- away. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, like for, for me, like a, a film that in terms of some, like I, like a film that I would just hear like an MP3 file of Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like in terms of atmosphere I, and stuff like that, that's I mean, crazy. I, I was talking about it with, with my partner the other day and, and she was like, I find, uh, she was like, I find it so interesting that like, cause literally in the morning, like on my walk to the train rides, you know, to Grand Central, like, I, I'm just blasting like soundtracks. Like I'll blast like the Game of Thrones soundtrack or right like a music soundtrack. And Yo, Hans just, Zimmer never fails, bro. Oh, like Hans it, Zimmer's will never let you down. It's, Hans it's Zimmer, incredible. Danny Elfman, Danny Elfman, Hans Zimmer, um, um, Michael Giacchino, John Williams, Michael Giacchino, John Williams, of course, one of the gold. Oh, yeah. he's, he's yeah. actually John Williams is getting a. Um, what? I just saw it the other day. It got announced. Um, he, he's having a uh, a documentary on him. No way. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, need nice. to see that. Yep. Oh, I definitely want to go see. Um, so I'm looking it up for May. Because uh, I, I saw a clip of it where they did Empire Strikes Back, but they did the orchestra version. Yeah, like they're playing the orchestra yes. while the, the film oh, is playing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm so, I'm in there. I'm in yeah, there like yeah. swimwear. I'm doing that. Like Because yeah. I, I, I saw a clip of them and then they did. It looks really cool. Well, first and foremost, Larry, spoilers. Have you seen Star Wars? Yes. Okay, great, great. Because I don't know. I don't know, right? What if I, like, I saw it at the Archeo Fordham Theater in the Bronx in the movie theater in 1978 when it first opened. Wow. Wow. Uh, and uh, so, but, uh, I'm, I'm. Nana, with... nana, boo, boo. <laughs> well, this is Empire Strikes Back. So there was the scene where, you know, you know, Luke and, and, and Vader have the moment of, you know, the, the obviously Spoilers iconic right, <laughs> iconic moment of him, him you know, saying he's his father. And then, like, when the orchestra starts playing, I'm just like, wow, like, I need to be there for that. Like, yeah. that sounds, like, in, incredible. Because it's really something that pulls you in, man. Like, that that's why, like, when, especially, like, when my, our guy Ludwig, when whenever we know that he's on something. Ludwig is another up-and-coming. Ludwig just... Goranson, like, he's incredible. Like, his work on Tenet, his work with Black, Black Panther, Panther and Wakanda Forever, and Mando, and Boba Fett. And he also did um, Turning Red for Pixar. 
Oh yeah, yeah, it's fire. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it's right. And then just just looking at like the diversity of all these you know composers, right? Kind of like what you said, like yeah, him yeah, doing yeah. something as complex as Tenant, a soundtrack for that, and then doing Turning Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so it, it's it, it's just incredible how even Ramen. Who, huh? Ramen, uh, the Wadi, like who, who? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Game made, of Thrones composer. Yeah. This, didn't you say that he, um, that he came up under Hans or something like that? One yeah, of them came yeah, up under Hans. Eunice said that he yeah, came yeah, up yeah. under Hans Zimmer. So yeah. it, it's these are just incredibly talented people. Like it, it's or, or uh, what's her name that did Joker? She's go, she's coming back to do Joker. Oh, yeah, she's I phenomenal. Yeah, hold on, let me look and, up. I don't want to just say like her that, name. That's that's the thing. Like I like I truly do enjoy like so I listen to soundtracks sometimes even more often than I do you know just regular you know songs. Well, you know it's really interesting. Um, more and more. Uh, film composers are starting to compose movie for games because mm. they make more money. Oh wow! And the music is, and the music's more expansive. So if uh, you should you should take a look at like what what games are using maybe younger. They're giving a shot to younger composers who are like the next generation Hans Zimmer or yeah. John Williams. Um, it's interesting because it's not and it's not all like tinklinky techno music. It's more and more like the work of the people you're talking about right now they in fact they're trying to sound more like wakanda and uh and the modern stuff the modern films yeah because it's big and sweeping and grand and you know a lot of people we just you know we just did this uh playlist for vero called my motivational song and a lot of people picked a lot of the music of these composers you're talking about as being very motivational, getting them up and getting them going. Yeah. First thing in the morning. It's very, very energizing. Larry, so it doesn't surprise me. Larry, I used to listen to Danny Elfman's um, Spider Man 3 opening title sequence, like his suite, every morning before school. <laughs> <laughs> For some That's reason, amazing. it just got yeah. me going. I was just like, oh, I guess I'm, I'm throwing this Danny on. And we get to Because it's just like, how does that even come across your mind to like, hey, I'm going to create this beat? I know, but don't you think that's awesome? Oh, it's, dude, it's, it's, it's like, incredible. You know why? It's because like, it accentuates like really smart music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it accentuates really what you're watching. Yeah, it accentuates what you're watching. It, it adds more depth to to the visuals because as much as you know, people <laughs> used to people used to watch silent films and stuff. There was still music playing in the background. Like that was still very much yeah. something that was part of it. Like there was somebody on a yeah. piano or something going off at it in the 1920s, like going crazy, like <laughs> during these stop motions and stuff. So it's, it's still very much part it's, of it. Yeah. But it's also, you know, I mean, just think about like, yeah, you know, I'm sure there are lots of kids who are doing exactly what you used to do when you were younger. And, you know, that's so much more uh, intelligent than reaching for a Drake record. Not that there's anything wrong with a Drake record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, your 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 scope of musical understanding is so much wider because you're you're listening to these suites and these, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, 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 man. Like like Michael Giacchino, his his suite for for the Batman. I love that over the regular theme because he goes he goes through all the kind of um, emotions of it. Like he goes the real grand with it. He goes super silent and sweet with it. Yeah, I, I love that. Mm. About it. Yeah, that's, it, it, it's probably like another, you know, it, like the again just mastering their craft. Yeah, like, that's why he was able to direct Werewolf by Night. <laughs> like and he they, smoked it. He did. He wow. did. He did two of the most popular characters of all times, Batman and Spider Man. He composed the themes for both of them. And Imagine like a the stress level. Come B, on. Like the the magnitude and, and both just remarkable scores. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It's like I, it's it to me blasphemous that he didn't get nominated for an Oscar for for, for yeah. best score yeah. for the Batman blasphemy. Um, well, you know there's wow. politics involved. You know there's <laughs> yeah. politics involved. Politics, you know, you know yeah. what industry we're talking about here, but man. But no, no, nonetheless, yeah, yeah right, Larry, right. I, I think um, kind of to to the whole conversation we've been having, right? Just music as a whole, like the way it just makes us all feel, and the, and the fact that it it made you feel so much that you decided to to make a living out of it, right? And yeah, it, I mean, it's yeah, it's my life. 
Yeah. And, There's no other way to put it. And it's I my think, life. I think 98%, uh, and, and this is this is totally not accurate at all, but I think 98% of people in the world listen and, and enjoy music. Like That's not a know? bad number. That's not a bad number. I, I, guess, cause, I guess you could say there's like 2% of people that are like, eh. <laughs> right. I, I'd That's rather just true. be in silence. Thanks. <laughs> right. Exactly. Larry, so we'll, we'll, we'll cap it off with a few things. One, right? Okay. I, I'm very curious to hear what is your, maybe, because it's, it's very difficult or maybe even impossible to be like, yes, I have like a favorite song, but maybe you do have a go to song that you're like, you know what? I can, oh, throughout my years, I can always go back to the song. Or various songs, right? It could be any song, and you're like, you know what? This is the one. Like, this is the one that may may define me a, as who I am. What, um, well, yeah. What's your needle drop? Because <laughs> to me, I, I have I have one, and, and to me, I don't know what yeah. it is about it. It's careless whisper. What is it? Careless whisper. Careless whisper. Mike. Okay. And, I, it could play right. anywhere, anytime. That is like, I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feeling, got no pleasure. I love it. I love that song. Especially when it drops. What in about you? What? About, yeah, really. What about you, Ariel? Uh, <laughs> heartless, Kanye West. No, <laughs> not heartless. I feel like it would be a Kanye song, though. I don't know, cause, it, cause my, I'm very weird with it, because I have like these weird stages of during the year where I'll listen to this for a certain amount of time, and then I'll move on and I'll listen to another thing. So right now. I'll say it's less than zero by the weekend right now. Great All, right. Like, All right. Yeah, because it has a nice, you know, 80s vibe to it, and, and the lyrics are really great. It's super sad, but it's also super hopeful. Yeah, like, yeah like, at the know. same time, yeah. yeah. And also Jim Carrey. Also, like, I, I guess I connect more to the entire album than I would just one song. Yeah. So, like, just that whole Don yeah, FM. Having, having Jim yo, Carrey yo, narrate. Jim Carrey narrate a radio station doing commercials, like, I, I, would, I would pay to hear that. That's good. That's good. I like that. All right. So um, I actually do have a favorite song. It's not a hit song. Uh, it's a, it's actually a deep cut by uh, Stevie Nicks from 1983. It's the title cut to her album Wild Heart. And I think the reason why it's my favorite song is because it is just under six minutes of mm -hmm. music. And it is a full journey like you go in with some piano and she's got that great tone that great raspy rock and roll tone yeah and all of a sudden the drum kicks in and suddenly it, it builds to this like uh almost like cinematic experience and it has uh, a great lyric where it's you know, that kind of captures what we should all be thinking about which is don't blame it on me. Blame it on my wild heart. Meaning, blame it on the purest part of me that just acts mm. without thinking. Mm. And, you know, in so much of my life, you know, and especially when you're a journalist and you're a broadcaster and you're trying to always be on the right word, on the right beat, on the right time, learning how to just be is like the hardest thing in the world to do. So that song always reminds me that you should just, just, just try your best to not overthink it, and just be. Beautiful. And and it just ex and it explodes where she's like, toward the end she's singing against herself, like they she recorded two vamps. Yeah, yeah. She's like and conflicting with herself. So, so she did. So she did a, a like, background on it. Yeah. So she's like. So it's like one lead vocal and then another lead vocal and they collide and and then eventually they just kind of dissolve into one voice and it really is like a movie and it's exhausting but and it's it's funny because every time i play the song for someone they go meh <laughs> that's like that's like the worst thing yo this is so funny yo, right like, like, yeah, imagine, so, like, imagine oh. playing somebody your favorite song ever and you're just like so they're like it's okay did it hit it's for happened. you it's all right it, it happened but here's the thing. I don't mind because it means I get to keep it to myself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, That's yeah. yours. It's still you know? selfishly. So, I get what you mean there, Larry, because <clears throat> although, like, like, for example, like the song Runaway by Kanye, like, it's nine minutes long, right? Yeah. And if I play, like, I remember <laughs> playing it for somebody and they were just like, yo, like, that was nine minutes, bro. And it's just like, okay, that's fine. Like, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get upset or anything because, like, 
Like like how you said that there's like this selfish part of you that's just like fine, like you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to, to like it. You don't have to. I like it. Yeah. I like it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I a, like it. I, I think a part of me too. I, I I've become so and Ariel and I were talking about this yesterday where even even with filmmakers, right? Like you, you go and sit down for a Nolan film or or a Denis Villeneuve film or James Cameron film, whatever it may be. When when you know that that these people, right? These artists, because I, I consider obviously directors are artists as well, right? And and, and songwriters, <coughs> what, whatever it is, if, if these people, if they have a genuine genuine love for it, you know that whatever they're creating has again going back to we we always love to to call it TLC, right? That tender love and care to yeah. it. There's just no way that. Especially if you like, uh, again, if you like the person as much as you do, there's no way you can go wrong and, and they're going to do you wrong in, in, in what they create. Like, I, I'm already going into Oppenheimer next year for Nolan. Oh, thinking yeah. Like, okay, like, it's, <laughs> I'm probably going to really enjoy this film. <laughs> Come like, on, man. Or, or, or right, with, with The weekend releasing the new album. It's like, I'm probably going to enjoy it because yeah, yeah. these are just masters of their crafts. Like, this yeah. is what they do. This is what they love. Yeah. Like, it, it's just very rare that these people are going to mess it yeah. up. And, and and again and, and sometimes to your point, Larry, like like may, maybe they are obviously they're giving the audience something, but a lot of it is themselves. Like they're yeah, exactly. creating this art because uh, again with, with Stevie Nicks, you're saying she's conflicting amongst herself. So this music is music yeah. that she's doing for her. It's still very but, personal. But she's like, yeah. hey, here you guys go. Yeah. Like I'm actually actually really good at singing and, and doing what I do, yeah. which I'm grateful for. But th this is stuff that I'm talking about for myself, and yeah. I'm just sharing it with you. If you like it, great. You don't, great. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's how I tend to perceive things. So I'll never like look at someone and be like, oh, like you know, you're wrong on this. Like this shit is whack uh, on the pod. You know, on, the, on the pod, on the pod yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with us, like when we joke around, of course. But you know, it, it's it, it's to me, it's just like it, it's just incredible, man. Like the, the the way these people are just able to create these like tunes and and the way they can just hit the high notes and, and it. It's just incredible. It's it's unmatched. I'm so glad I can still hear. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. an, an underrated yeah. and under right. We we really do, I think, underappreciate our senses. Right. Yeah, our, our sense of real, listening and, and hearing. And, and to Larry's point earlier, right. Just even in, in even in conversation, just listening to what a person is saying to you. Yeah. And that and that's that that bodes true with 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 songs and, yeah, and with 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 soundtracks exactly with, yep. uh, with anything. So. Yeah. It's great. I, I love it. I fucking love it. <laughs> I love it. We're here with it. And, Color coordinated and all. And Larry, I guess I guess we'll leave off with this. So how how great do you and, and I guess I know I know the answer to this, but how great do you think you are with music? If if we play you like three <laughs> songs right now, do you think you could guess it? <laughs> or am I underestimating you? Am I underestimating you? <laughs> <laughs> You're overestimating. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. I mean, I could try. I could give it a try. I'm talking yeah. about. I'm gonna be playing some deep cuts. Well, maybe deep cuts to certain people listening. All right, yeah, let's do it. I'll give it. I'll give it a go. I, you know, we do not own the rights to any of these songs. Yeah, for context the reasons, right. this is for Larry to figure out what we're listening to. <laughs> okay, go on. That's it. That's all you get, bro. No, wait, hold on. First, lower the volume a little all right, bit. My bad, my bad. <laughs> and then second, yeah, <laughs> do, do a little bit more. All right, all right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's do it yeah. again. Let's do it again. No, you're, you're supposed to know that. From the top, from the top. Oh, oh, I uh, oh shit! I know that. Damn you. Come on. <laughs> Damn you. Tell me. Tell Moon me. Moon Age Daydream by David Bowie. Oh, man. Wow. Ooh, that's a good one. Wow. That's a good one. I knew it was old. We'll do We'll do one more. One more. Okay. Let's All see. Right, one I more, got one, one here. Uh... God, I'm shit at these games. <laughs> <laughs> On. You know what it is? You know what's funny too when these situations happen? Like you get put on the spot. It's like, bro, like why? Like I wasn't prepared for this. I was okay. here to chill. Okay. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm just this this might my, my life is built around like this stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a bit more obscure, but let's see. More obscure. Oh, 
that's a that oh that's a Mississippi girl, Mississippi woman. Mississippi Queen, let's go! Mississippi <laughs> Queen <laughs> by Mountain. Yes, sir, yeah, by Mountain. How did awesome. I get that one? <laughs> no, but I thought I thought you would you get You weren't even and... born when that song came out. <laughs> Larry, this it's still on a playlist. I love it. <laughs> Neither of you were born when that record came out. We know it. We know yeah, it. I know it. <laughs> it's in my library. Oh my god, that's a great song. Yeah. This is the Larry I love it. Queen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mr. With the Le- Leslie, who was that guitar player? Leslie. Um, Leslie. Uh, I was just watching his live performance in Randall's Island in New York, like in the in Ran- the- shout out to, Randall's to- Island. Yeah. <laughs> How about Randall's Island? Yeah. <laughs> I used to play baseball. He used to be on the Howard Stern show all the time. Uh, hang on. Now, now you're making me look it up. Uh, Randall's Island. Randall's Island. <laughs> Leslie West. Leslie West. Leslie West, yes. He was a good dude. Man, that guy, he can shred, though, because in that, in that, in yeah. that, that performance, man. You could tell yeah, it, you could tell play. the room you could tell the room probably had no windows but everybody was just there for the vibes like everybody was just there to listen. Yeah, it was it looked yeah. so cool in there. Oh, thank, thank God I got one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some I didn't lose didn't lose all my street cred. No, no, come on, come on, man. Sure not. Nah, right. Never that here. Not on a tri- not yeah. on a trivia night. Nah, come nah. on. <laughs> <laughs> but M- Mr. Larry Flick, we really, really appreciate you coming on, spending some time kicking it with us. Um, it was my it was, pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. It was it was our pleasure having you. Yeah, for real. Um, and yeah, you're you are a friend of the podcast. Yeah, um, friend of any, the show officially. Yeah. Anytime, anytime you want to come on, just say the word uh if you want to hit us up on you better Vero. be careful because i you'll be you better be careful because i'll be asking <laughs> totally fine <laughs> and next time and next time i'm going to come with notes to tell you what i thought about what you said last week oh <laughs> yo we we, yeah. we we want nothing more than um than than some uh constructive criticism from you for sure we, we oh no not, <laughs> no i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about like you know hey you brought this I, up uh, <laughs> you're wrong see I'm, I'm i'm so i'm scrolling and i'm like yeah i listen to that one i listen to that one and you know my favorite so far is uh episode 195 Jag, just the guy. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Uh, I really liked uh, uh, 193. I remember that one. Hook up. So, so and, no, notable uh, episode. Are, are you an Andor fan? <laughs> and uh, gosh, I'm scrolling because I've listened to a lot of these. Jeez, we're, we're super thrilled. Thanks we're for super the streams, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, good. It's good. It's and good, what, good, what we want to do too, we we. Oh, promise. and one seventy nine was good too. One seventy nine. Had a little mark one. next to that. That was the water cooler talk. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best ones, and that that brings me to what I was about to say is, obviously, you know, we love you know talking about the the you know comic book or, or not just comic book, but you know geeky kind of shows and, and films that we watch but we do also love to just kick back and just you know talk about whatever comes to mind so that's why we love the water cooler talks because that 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 kind yeah, of the water cooler talks are good yeah yeah there was also one uh what was it was it 157 156 man that's 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 deep in the roller decks yeah the water cooler <laughs> oh the one where we had with uh Gilberto when Gilberto came on oh, another yeah. water cooler wait yeah. what was 156 I think that was Gilberto really yeah but yes yeah, so Larry you are our first our first guest of 2023 yes sir hopefully oh, not the last time thank you, you. Yeah, yes sir of course started off the yeah. year started off the year uh, on the right foot Ask me back anytime. I would be thrilled to do it. And I might just pop up in your inbox and say, okay, you know what? I got something to say. <laughs> if you got something to say, yeah, Larry. then you're always welcome. Let, let, let the studio now be your echo chamber. And that's another thing, too. <laughs> whenever whenever you are back in New York, if you do come for a trip, we would love to, you know, come welcome through you and a chill. have you, have oh, you well, in the studio. A, that's a given. That's a given. We'll hang. We'll hang it. Yeah. I don't know when I'm coming back to New York. May not be for a year or so, but mm-hmm. we will hang when I when I do come back. For sure, Larry. Otherwise, y'all just 
Y'all just have to come here and I'll show you some sheep farms. Yes, we will. <laughs> Let's we'll take a there. trip across the pond, and man. Then, and then, um, <laughs> yeah, you got to bring us to a Premier League a, game. I want to watch a Premier League we game. Have a, we, have a, we have a guest room. It's all yours. Not fancy, but it's yours. Uh, I could squeeze both of you in a bed or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bunking with uh, JB. <laughs> yeah. But we'll no, no, it. seriously, seriously. We will. This is. This will be. I hopefully. Hopefully, the first of many conversations. For Thanks, sure. Larry. Yes, we appreciate it. And um, yeah, shout out to uh, to Vero, our unofficial official sponsor <laughs> <laughs> of this of this podcast yeah, really? episode. Yeah, we'll we'll let them know because I, I think it's a nice little Vero collab. And yes, for sure, we'll do plenty. Yeah, more. I'll, and I'll and I'll be sharing this as well. So. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank the, you. Bron- the Bronx Bomber himself. Shout out the Larry Bronx Flick. Bomber. Shout out yeah. the color yellow. Yeah. <laughs>